Good morning. morning. You're almost as bad in here as they are outside for the second service. I'm like, come forward. (laughs) Come forward. But you're still closer than they are usually out there. So that's okay. First pastor that's ever said that. After being here for like four years, I finally said it. Yeah, so as long as I'm yelling about, not yelling, as long as I'm complaining about it, I'll tell you what I told the folks outside a couple of weeks ago is uh, we had an interim pastor in my home congregation, and one of the first Sundays that she was there, she like came to right about here, and she said, you're all sitting way in the back, I'll wait for you while you move forward, and she stood there. And everybody moved forward, and everybody sat forward for as long as she was there until the new pastor came, and then it all went back. So I know how it works. Okay, there's my tangent for today. Um, Happy Independence Day tomorrow, but more importantly, I'm glad to see you here at worship today. Thank you for being here. Those of you joining us from home, we are always happy to have you with us as well. So thank you for that. We invite you to uh, say hello to one another. Please join us when it's time for communion as well. Uh, The announcements are in your bulletin. I'll let you read those. A reminder, of course, the office is closed tomorrow. And after that, it's a busy week around here. And one of the reasons it's busy, just one of them, is it's fun days, right? Everybody knows that. And this is our last hour plea. If you have a couple of hours Friday or Saturday night, that's when we're still in need of some volunteers to help at the pie and brat stand. The Senden family would be very grateful if you've got maybe even just an hour. They'll take whatever, I am sure. But those are... Uh, We're doing pretty well, but Friday night and Saturday night is when we are still looking for some volunteers to help make a little food, serve a little food, and see your friends and neighbors. Uh, We extend our sympathy to Joan Klanderud. Her brother uh, passed away uh, living in Grand Island, Nebraska, so she's traveling down there, so we uh, keep her in our prayers. Otherwise, I invite you to stand as you are able, and let's begin worship. God is in this house today, for God longs to be in relationship with us. God is in this house today, for God loves the sinners and the saints. God is in this house today, for God sees all, claims all, and loves us. God is in this house today, so let us worship holy God. We continue with our prayer of confession. Gracious God, Zacchaeus valued money over people and power over equality. He was a sinner, but so are we. Like Zacchaeus, we are quick to prioritize the wrong things, valuing our to-do lists over family time, our own success over a relationship with you, wealth over generosity. We lose sight of what really matters. We lose sight of love. Forgive us our ignorance and impatience. Call us back to the life you long for us to lead. With humility and gratitude we pray. Amen. And we continue with our song. Satisfies my longings as nothing. 
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for the peace from above and for our salvation. Let us pray to the of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us praise to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen, amen. This is the peace of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. Power and riches, wisdom and strength, and honor and blessing and glory. Victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Singing with the people of God. Join in the hymn of all creation. Sing and honor, glory and might. 
light be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the peace, the victory for our God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory. Alleluia. 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 Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God. The Father of our Lord Jesus, you are the city that shelters us, the mother who comforts us. With your spirit, accompany us on our life's journey, that we may spread your peace in all the world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I turned myself off and didn't mean to. Timothy, you want to hear? He comes. All right. <coughs> I am not much of an artist. I found this like late last week, or I made this late last week. Do you know what it's supposed to be? Nah. A firecracker. Why would I? I can't bring a real firecracker, right? But when do we use firecrackers? Have you heard some firecrackers in your neighborhood lately? Did you do some poppets? Yeah. Those are kind of fun. Yeah. Yep, yep. Some sparklers. And some sparklers. Excellent. You got some more to do tonight or tomorrow too? Okay. Yeah, that'll be fun. Well, this is a pretend firecracker. But you know how firecrackers work, right? What do you have to do? You light them and then what happens? They explode because the fire burns down here and then it goes Boom! And it makes a huge sound. It's like blowing up. And we love the sound for some odd reason. I haven't figured that part out. So I was reading something and it said, you know, thinking about a firecracker and especially when it burns its fuse, it's kind of like us sometimes. We might burn along and things might be okay and then finally we explode. What does it look like when we explode, do you think? Like fireworks, yeah. Like we get angry and upset and we just go, oh, we might go off on somebody or say something or do something we don't like. And different people have different lengths of fuse. So some of us can hang in there for a long time before we finally get upset and others of us might get upset right away. But what I wanted to find out today is how long do you think God's fuse is? Yeah, maybe. Should we try this? We'll pretend like this is God's fuse. Should we see what happens? You take it. We'll see if this works. You better stand up maybe or something. God's fuse goes on for a long time, doesn't it? Yeah. You suppose God gets angry once in a while? I think so too. But God's got lots more patience than you or I, and we are very grateful that God has that patience, don't you think? Look at that. You wrapped it back up. Now you can play with that, but you've got to give it back to me at the end of the service so I can put it back in my firecracker for the next one. Fair enough? And you got a book. All right. All right. Thank you for joining me. We'll continue with our reading. The first reading for today is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20, beginning with chapter, with verse 1. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, 
Ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I'm sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Word of God, word of life. Please join with me in reading Psalm 66, verses 1 through 9. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Be joyful, all the earth. Sing the glory of God's name. Sing the glory of God's praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God. How awesome are God's deeds toward all people. God turned the sea into dry land so that it went through the water on fong, and there we rejoiced in God. Ruling forever in might, God keeps watch over the nations. Let no rebels exalt themselves. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sound of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. Please stand as you are able. gospel reading for this morning is from the 19th chapter of the gospel of luke praise to you O lord then jesus entered and walked through jericho there was a man there his name zacchaeus the head tax man and quite rich he wanted desperately to see jesus but the crowd was in his way he was a short man and he couldn't see over the crowd so he ran on ahead and climbed up in a sycamore tree so he could see jesus when he came by when Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. Zacchaeus scrambled out of the tree, hardly believing his good luck, delighted to take Jesus home with him. Everyone who saw the incident was indignant and grumped, what business does he have getting cozy with this crook? Zacchaeus just stood there, a little stunned. He stammered apologetically, Master, I give away half my income to the poor. And if I'm caught cheating, I pay four times the damages. 
Jesus said, Today is salvation day in this home. Here he is, Zacchaeus, son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to find and restore the lost. This is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Welcome to Jericho. Thanks for joining me for a few moments this morning. I wanted to tell you this story that a friend shared with me quite a while ago now. And uh, it'll sound a little strange, but just hang in there with me. My friend says that we can learn a lot about our relationship with God by how a mother animal takes care of her babies. Sounds strange, right? But there's a couple of different ways to look at how we might relate to God. And we can do it looking at a baby animal. Now, some of you, anybody got a ferret for a pet in your household? Come on. Well, there's people out there. We know that my next door neighbor's got a a pet ferret. And if you've ever looked at a mother ferret, you know that she just picks that baby up by the scruff of the neck. And she carries it along wherever it needs to go. And then she puts it down when she's done. And that baby, well, that baby doesn't need to do anything except enjoy the ride. Just go along and hang their limp. My, oh, there I am. I can I don't keep it down. So uh, let's see. Where was I? So the, the way to look at that baby ferret and our relationship with God is sometimes God just picks us up, keeps us in God's arms, and we don't have to do anything. We just go along for the, for the ride. But I know I, you've got a pet monkey at your household. I know you do. And those of you who have the monkeys, yeah, in more ways, you have more than one monkey, right? And so what we know about a pet monkey is God will, or the mom will pick up that baby monkey, but then that monkey's got to hold on, right? You've seen it work, how that monkey's got to either grasp that mom by its stomach or or on its back, and if the baby monkey doesn't hold on, it's going to fall off. Oh, my friend says that's just another way to think about how God holds on to us, picks us up. But we also have a little bit of work to do in order to make sure we're holding on as well. Okay, okay, I know you're wondering, why in the world is she telling me this story? Well, it's because I know you've heard about Zacchaeus. And I know you've heard about what he's been up to lately. And I started thinking about it, and I decided, you know, Zacchaeus is a lot like a baby monkey. Now, let me explain. You all know, if you don't know Zacchaeus, I know you all know who Zacchaeus is. After all, he is the richest tax collector in our whole region. Not just any tax collector, the wealthiest, because he's the chief tax collector. And here he is, knowing Jesus is coming to Jericho one day, and he wants to see Jesus. Now, right there, you've got to ask yourself a question. Why? Why was it so important for Zacchaeus to want to see Jesus? After all, he had everything he needed, right? Everything he wanted. He had all the wealth and power anybody would need. So what was that about? And it makes me start wondering, do you suppose Zacchaeus was missing something in his heart? Do you suppose he had some sort of a hole in his heart that he wanted to see filled? Well, at any rate... He wanted to see Jesus. And so you've heard the story. I know you have. Everybody's heard about it. It's gone all over the countryside. Zacchaeus climbed up in that sycamore tree that day in order to catch a glimpse of Jesus. But you know what I think is the most amazing thing about that story? It was that it wasn't so much that Zacchaeus got to see Jesus, but Jesus saw Zacchaeus. Are you with me? Think about that for a minute. How in the world did Jesus know Zacchaeus was up in that sycamore tree? You know what they look like, especially this time of the year? Once you climb up there and you're hidden among all the leaves and the branches, he didn't have to know that Zacchaeus was up there, but somehow he did. And he marched through town and he marched right to the base of that tree and he looked up like he knew Zacchaeus had been there all along and he said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to your house today. 
how amazing is that? That Jesus took the time to see Zacchaeus of all people. Well, you know what happened to Zacchaeus, right? You heard about that. Shock, surprise, but he scrambled down that tree as fast as he could. And I tell you, I saw the grin on his face that day. It stretched from ear to ear. And he definitely went and took Jesus home, and they had a feast. But I think the most important thing in all of that was that he was seen by Jesus. I can't just make sense of it any other way. And I think it was in that moment, maybe, that Zacchaeus started acting like a baby monkey. After all, he clung to Jesus for the rest of that day. Wherever Jesus was, Zacchaeus was right by his side. And ever since that, he hasn't stopped talking about it. And it's not just that. You've heard what Zacchaeus has been up to, right? He was already, as tax collectors go, not a bad tax collector, but he's been doing even more. It's like he's a whole new person. He's, a, he's become a generous person, almost like he cares about other people. In fact, if I didn't know better... I'd say Zacchaeus is acting like a man who's turned to love for the first time ever. And he will tell you himself, because I've heard it from his mouth, that hanging on to Jesus and following Jesus and going wherever Jesus wants him to go has now become the most important thing in his life. Well, I'm thinking that all of us who were there that day witnessed a miracle. After all, there are lots of other powerful people, lots of people who have a lot of money who are working in our empire, and I haven't seen too many of them want to see Jesus. Nor have I seen Jesus maybe pay too much attention to them. And so I wonder, is there this thing between wanting us to see Jesus and Jesus seeing us? Is there some sort of a like I said, relationship, just like a relationship a mother monkey has to her baby monkey. I wonder if we got to want to change in order to see Jesus and in order to be seen by Jesus. All I know is that when Jesus saw Zacchaeus, it changed his whole world. He's a new man, a totally different man for much the better, it seems as well. So I wonder, what's that mean for me? And what's that mean for you too? I wonder if Jesus might be willing to see me in the same way Jesus was willing to see Zacchaeus. And if that's going to happen, I wonder if I need to want to see Jesus first. And I think about what that means. Now, I'm not planning on climbing a tree like Zacchaeus did, but I do know where I can find Jesus, where he's out teaching and preaching, and there's no reason at all why I can't go and listen and hear what he has to say. And there's no reason at all why I can't talk to other people who have seen Jesus and been transformed by Jesus. After all, there are dozens of folks like that around the countryside these days. And if I do that, if I, like a baby monkey, go and try and catch up to Jesus and hop on his back... Well, what's Jesus going to do for me? And how is he going to see me? And how might that change me? Might it change the way I live my life, just like Zacchaeus? Might it change the way I use my own heart and hands and voice and share my belongings and all those kinds of things? And, well, I don't know. I do know it sounds a little bit scary, maybe, to think about doing that, but it also sounds, I think, a lot exciting. And I think I can overcome any little bit of fear I might have in order to go and catch a glimpse of Jesus and see what happens. So I'm heading out. Want to come?
able and together let us confess our faith using the testimony that is before us into the silence of the void the creator spoke and the world came into being the word of God in the vastness brought light from darkness matter from nothing flesh from dust life from lifelessness in the quiet of a small town in Palestine the word of God came to us even though of one being with the Creator, the Jesus our Christ, taking on human form, was born, lived, and walked among us, speaking the words of life. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He rose from the dead and speaks to us today. He is the one who saves us from ourselves. In the stillness of our souls, the Spirit of God, who is one with the Creator and the Christ, whispers the word, and calls us back to the Creator, back to the Christ, back to the wholeness of everlasting life in the unity of the Creator, Christ, and Spirit. United in Christ and guided by the Spirit, we pray for the church, the creation, and all in need. And as we have been doing for the last few weeks, when we reach the petition where we lift up individual names of people I invite you to uh, lift those up from among the congregation and you'll find them at the back and bottom of your bulletin. Lord of the harvest, you send your church into the world to proclaim Christ's new creation to all. Renew the church as it carries out your mission of peace and healing and joy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your creation abounds with flowing waters and diverse creatures. Guide the work of climate scientists as they develop and advocate ways to restore Earth's natural balance. Motivate humankind to adopt lifestyles that protect and sustain the Earth. God of grace, hear our prayer. You guard the nations. Let no leaders exalt themselves, but lift up the most vulnerable and work for the good of all. Send your spirit to eradicate classism and inequity, violence and war, poverty and hunger. God of grace, Hear our prayer. You desire abundant life for all. As we soon celebrate Independence Day, instill in us gratitude, generosity, and persistence in working toward freedom for all people. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of justice, we grieve the many injustices that are in the world around us. As we share with one another our grief and as we pour out our laments and as we look to use our anger in ways that can be constructive, guide us, show us, and lead us. Today we pray especially for some of the laments we lifted up last Sunday, especially for the injustice of war, including the war in Ukraine. 
We lament the gun violence that is in this country that has taken so many lives and left so many with lifelong traumas. And we pray for the lack of supports and services in our mental health system and for the failure on the part of us all to help those with disability and difficulty who face inequity and insecurity. God of grace, hear our prayer. Mothering God, you care for all people in need. Nourish those who are hungry, restore employment to those who have lost work, heal those who are sick, and comfort all who are dying or grieving. Today, we remember especially. God of grace, hear our prayer. God of every time and place, in Jesus' name and filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another. After that, you can be seated and we'll receive our offering. One of the ways in which we can regularly be transformed and changed by Jesus Christ is through the gift of Holy Communion that we now celebrate. As we remember how on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The meal is ready and everyone is welcome at the table. The ushers will direct you forward.
One bread, one body, one Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout. Gentile or Jew, servant or free, woman or man, no more. One bread, one body, one Lord. One cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body. And we, throughout the earth, we are one body in this one Lord. Rain for the fields, scattered and grown. One Lord of all, one cup of blessing which we bless, and we, the many, throughout the earth, we are one body. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. 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 I invite you to stand as you are able for our sending song. the God of love go with us every day to a world in need with news of joy and peace. May the God of justice be the song our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share and joy with all. God of hope go with us every day to a world in need with news of joy and peace. May the God of love go with us every day.
the God of justice lead us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace, singing, share our joy with all, working for a world that's new, faithful when we knew Christ call. Go in peace and love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.